Let's talk about database replication for your system design interview. Database replication is basically what it sounds like, copying data from one data source to another, and thus replicating it in one or more places. There are many reasons for copying data. To protect against data loss during system failures, to serve increased traffic, or even to improve latency when pursuing a regional strategy. You can also think of replication as a proactive strategy to help applications scale. Ultimately, with data in modern distributed systems being spread out across multiple nodes and the fact that networks are notoriously unreliable, storing data in multiple places to prevent data loss has become absolutely essential. Our focus today is going to be on the strategies that you can use to copy data, specifically for databases. Although a lot of these replication strategies are viable for other data sources too, like caches, app servers, and object file storage. Replication is simple if data doesn't change much. Unfortunately, that's not the case with most modern systems. So how do write requests cascade across multiple identical databases with timeliness and consistency? There are a few strategies to choose from, though, as always, there are trade-offs for each. First, there is the leader follower strategy, also known as primary replica. This is probably the most common strategy, where a query writes to a single designated leader. The leader then replicates the updated data to followers. Sounds simple enough. So what's the catch? Well, if this is done synchronously, it can be really, really slow. Synchronous replication requires that both the leader and followers must commit before the write is considered successful. This does ensure that follower data is up to date. But if a follower in the chain goes down, the write query will fail. And even if the whole system is up, waiting for a follower located halfway across the world to come back up and acknowledge a successful write will raise latency considerably. Asynchronous replication may be an option for use cases where transaction speed is more important than consistently accurate data. With asynchronous replication, the leader sends write requests to its followers and moves on without waiting for acknowledgement. Is this faster? Yes. But this introduces inconsistency between the leader and followers, which can be a huge problem if the leader goes down and the most up-to-date data is lost. And make no mistake, leader failures will happen. In the case of a simple leader-follower strategy, when the leader fails, which is also called a failover, the replica is promoted to be the leader and takes over. Failover is a huge problem under asynchronous replication, but it's not great under synchronous replication either. Without a leader, you lose the ability to handle rights. It's absolutely critical to talk through leader failure in your system design interview. Luckily, there are a few tweaks to the base leader follower framework that can help. Our next strategy tweaks leader follower by designating more than one leader in the system. This is called leader leader or multi leader. And it's a simple way to mitigate leader failure. In this strategy, more than one database is available to take rights, meaning if one leader goes down, the other can step in. In order to figure out which one steps in, we use different types of consensus algorithms to elect a new leader. The most common consensus algorithm out there is Paxos, which you may have already heard of. This multi-leader strategy does introduce a slight lag as data must be replicated to multiple leaders and engineers need to deal with that complexity, especially when discrepancies arise between leaders. But the added durability mostly outweighs the cons. Next, we have leaderless replication. Why maintain the leader follower hierarchy at all if leader election and conflict resolution are so painful? Amazon's DynamoDB repopularized the idea of leaderless replication, and now most cloud providers use something similar. A lot of people consider leaderless replication to be pure anarchy, but there are some clever methods for dealing with the chaos that comes with managing a network of read and write capable replicas. For example, with read repair, clients can detect errors when several nodes return a consistent value, but one doesn't. These errors are then fixed by sending a write request to the inconsistent node. Now that we know a few replication strategies, how do you know when to implement one? There are so many reasons to include replicas and so many strategies to choose from. We generally recommend including replicas in anything more than the most basic server database system. The key is choosing the right strategy. To learn more, check out the Exponent article linked in the description to get more in-depth about each of these strategies and the best time to use them. Good luck with your interviews and thanks for watching.